Welcome to Let's Talk Meshing's Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature in just a couple of minutes. In this video, we're going to show you how to do model assembly. So right here I have an intake port geometry that consists of a number of surfaces. I'm going to go ahead and just select all of those surfaces and go to Create Assemble Models. This is the model assembly panel in Pointwise, and it's where you can create a watertight representation of your geometry, or as few watertight representations of your geometry as possible. Now, using the default edge tolerance, I'm going to uh, assemble this model. You'll notice that I end up with two models, 52 quilts, and 88 lamina boundaries. What does that mean? Well, a model is a watertight collection of quilts. It's a watertight representation of your geometry that allows you to create quickly create a watertight surface mesh. A quilt is a topological meshing region, all right? So that, you know, you have your single model that consists of multiple quilts. Each one of those quilts is going to get its own domain when meshed. Now, both of these, again, are just topology. They're pieces of information that facilitate meshing in pointwise that sit on top of the underlying geometry. Now, the next thing is a lamina boundary. A lamina boundary is a free edge, and you can see these lamina boundaries highlighted in red here. And those represent gaps or cracks or maybe even holes in the surface. And ideally what we'd like to do is heal those before we start meshing. To do that, the easiest thing is to increase your edge tolerance. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase my edge tolerance and clear the assembly and reassemble. And you'll notice that I was able to eliminate all of those lamina boundaries. Now, if you have a gap or a hole in the surface that happens to be larger than the smallest feature of the geometry, what you're gonna have to do is exit this panel, go ahead and maybe create a filler surface or something like that, come back in and then use a smaller edge tolerance. This tolerance is gonna need to be smaller than your, your smallest feature edge length in your geometry. Now, once you've done that and you've got your watertight model, you can go ahead and click OK to accept it. Now, the nice thing about a watertight model is when you mesh it, that surface mesh is guaranteed to be watertight as well. So I can quickly come up here and create an unstructured surface mesh on this model. I'm going to turn off the view of the model and shade my domains. And you can see I have a watertight surface mesh. Each domain was created on a single quilt within that model. And the nice thing is, is because the surface mesh is watertight, I can quickly create a block and I can select that block and I can initialize it. In this case, I'm creating an isotropic TET volume and I can go to examine and quickly take a cut, turn off the view of the domains and you can see the result of that operation. So that's how you go ahead and do model assembly and how that facilitates watertight surface and volume meshing. Hope that helps. Thank you and have a pleasant Tuesday.